wouldn't recommend this on your own system but this is a completely clean install of linux so let's see what happens when i give it full access <laughs> All right, so Google just dropped the Gemini CLI, which is this thing here. It's an open source AI agent that brings the power of Google Gemini directly to your terminal. I have a clean installation of Linux right here, and I'm going to ask it to do a few things. I've given it full control, so it should be able to run all the commands it needs to, first of all, install Windsurf, and then clone a project from GitHub and run it. So installing the CLI is very, very simple. All you need to make sure of is that you have Node.js on your machine, and then you can install it with either of these two commands. You get an option to set up the theme that you want, and and then all you have to do is sign up with your Google account. Okay, so after it's installed, we should be able to access the CLI by just typing in Gemini. And then we can just say hello and it will respond right there in the terminal. Pretty cool. All right, now let's see if we can install Windsor for us. So let's click download and let's copy and paste all of these commands into Gemini and ask it to install and serve. Say pretty please, just to be nice paste that in there hit enter so now it's asking me permission to do certain commands but i'm going to give it full access so i'm going to say allow this type of command always so on linux it looks like it needs sudo access to execute certain commands so i'm going to ask it to give me the command that gives my profile sudo access without having to enter a password wouldn't recommend this on your own system but this is a completely clean install of linux which i've prepared for this small test so let's see what happens when i give it full access okay so it's responded with this command will allow user home to execute any sudo command without the password i will create a new file in the sudoers.d directory to achieve this this is safer than editing the main cool 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 this can have security implications as it makes it easier for malicious software or other users to gain access okay we know that I'll be resetting everything after this small test. So I'm going to take this command. I'm going to close the CLI, paste it into the terminal. I'm going to close the terminal and restart it. We're going to restart Gemini, which should now have sudo access and should be able to install Windsurf. You should have sudo access now please install wind surf for me and this time it seems to be work working so each question it's asking me i'm going to give you full access yes allow always echo always allow remove so I don't think I've saved any time there because of all the setup that I had to do. But because I only have to set up the CLI once, anything that I ask it in the future should be much faster. So let's check out if it actually did install Windsurf. So let me go to search Windsurf. Open it and welcome to Windsurf. Wonderful. Fresh start and we'll use Synthwave and um, skip onboarding and we're in. Wonderful stuff. Cool. All right, second small test. Um, I'm going to ask it to clone a whole repository and set it up for me. And let's see how far it gets. The GitHub repository that I'm looking at right now, that I'm thinking of right now, is this one called Plane, which is a Jira alternative and it's open source. So I was looking at this earlier today. I feel like I need a bit of project management in my life and I. Uh, and I have a small idea that I wanted to try out with this open source version. So so let's ask the Google CLI to install it. So it's going to need to do a lot of things to get this installed. Um, there are a lot of missing dependencies on this machine. The only thing that is installed is Node.js, but it's going to need Docker and potentially a few other things that I don't even know yet because I have not looked at this project. I'm just hoping that the Google CLI will be able to install it and get it up and running with minimal input from me. So let's see what it does. So I'm going to tell it, please clone and run this project. I'm not giving it any more information about the project, what it needs to do. I'm just giving it the GitHub URL. I don't even think Git is installed on this machine. So again, allow always 
It might need to install git before it can do anything. It's managed to clone it without any issues. I apologize I made a mistake. The previous step I need to provide the absolute path. I will now list the contents. Cool, cool, cool. So it read the readme.md and it understands that it needs to install all of the required dependencies before it can do anything else. So it understands that we need Docker, we need Node.js, we need Python, we need Postgres and Redis. So again, I'm just gonna allow always, give it all the permissions it needs to do what it needs to do. It's moving faster than I can read everything. So, so I need to pause every now and again to read what it's actually doing. So it seems like it understands that we have an older version of Node.js. So it's going to use Node version manager to install the correct version. So all I'm doing right now is just accepting all of its suggestions. So at this point, everything is happening too fast for me to read. And I'm just going to keep hitting yes to see where it leads. It looks like it's trying to install Python 3. So it's added my home user to the Docker group. And it's saying that for this to take effect, I need to log in and log back out. So this is standard for anyone who's used Docker. Something you do, something you need to do when you're setting up your Docker. So let me close the CLI. But I don't think it will remember everything that has happened in this conversation. So it'll be interesting to see where it picks up from after I log out and log back in. All right, so I've logged out, logged back in, and we're about to restart Gemini to see if it probably won't remember where we left off. So, so I don't remember where it actually saved the project. So I'm going to give it the URL and ask it to find it. And interestingly enough, and interestingly enough, it seems like it found where the folder was and is continuing where it left off. It's asking me if it can ask it. It's asking me if it can execute some yarn commands. So go ahead, little Gemini. Let's see what you can do. Looks like it's building a Next.js file, and it's compiled successfully. And there we go, the application. And there we go, Gemini CLI has successfully cloned a repository that I've never interacted with before and it's managed to install all of the dependencies needed. Again you gotta remember that this is a clean install of Linux so it doesn't have any it doesn't have Python, pip, Docker, Node.js, all of that. Um, it was able to navigate all of the requirements needed for this application and install everything which is seriously impressive. All right, so I'll play around with that later in my own time. And now I'm just going to give the Gemini CLI a bonus test. So I'm going to see if it can install DaVinci Resolve, which is really good video editing software, which is also available on Linux. So I'm going to tell it to go to the download folder and install DaVinci Resolve. That's what I'm going to tell it. All right, so this is amazing. It looks like it's done that as well, and it hasn't come across any issues. Um, it did take a few seconds to complete the last action but now it's saying everything is done DaVinci has been installed so let's search for it and start it up and wouldn't you know it there it is if you're seeing this video it means that DaVinci works and I am able to edit it inside this Linux sandbox I have set up for Gemini wonderful stuff all right, so I think I'm going to leave it there. Um, we've done a few experiments with this. Thank you for watching if you've stayed all the way up until the end. And peace. Catch you in the next video.